Welcome to our 2017 showcase. This showcase features seniors that were represent that are representatives from each one of their uh, high schools. This group of students, I can tell you this, some of them have served with me on advisory committees before, but today is completely unrehearsed. It's a wonderful exchange between our students, myself, and hopefully will be very informative for our community and those watching today. This group of 2017 graduates, I, I can tell you and rest assured that we are in great hands. They are so intelligent and so innovative, and I think you'll hear that from this group to know that South Carolina, Beaufort County, and our nation is well on their way to becoming leaders in the global economy. So before we begin, I'd like to ask each student, each senior, to stand up, give us your name, your school that you're representing, and any future plans that you may have after you graduate in less than 30 days. My name is Jalissa DuPont. I go to May River High School and my plans for the future is to enlist into the United States Army. My name is Logan Ellison. I go to uh, May River High School and I plan to go to TCL for two years and then after TCL I plan to transfer to another university. Uh, my name is Eric Nelson. I attend Mary River High School and I plan to uh, go to Towson University next fall and study finance. My name is Clinton Taylor um, from Battery Creek and I plan on going to University of South Carolina, Columbia and become a sports medicine physician. My name is Clarissa Reyes from Battery Creek High School and I plan on going to College of Charleston in the fall of, of this year. My name is Denisha Miller. I am at Hilton Head Island High School and I plan to uh, attend North Carolina Central to play volleyball and study sports medicine. My name is Marlon Ascension. I'm from Hilton Head Island High School and I, I'm decided where I will attend this fall. My name is Ivan Carr. I'm attending Alice Academy. I will be going to USAB in the fall. My name is Madeline Prince. I attend Hilton Head Island High School, and next year I'll be studying nuclear engineering at the United States Naval Academy. My name is Philip Evans. I also attend Hilton Head Island High School, and I'll be attending Harvard next year to study philosophy. My name is Aja Parker. I attend Batty Creek High School. I'll be attending University of South Carolina in the fall in Columbia, and I'll be majoring in biolo biological science. My name is Jonathan Buck. I'm attending Battery Creek High School, and after graduation, I'll be studying aerospace engineering at the United States Naval Academy. My name is John Cherry, and I'm going to the University of Georgia to study engineering at Beaufort High School. Hi, my name is Mary Claire Sumner, and I'm from Beaufort High School, and I'm going to be going to the University of South Carolina to study made, er, nursing. My name is Christina Dorr. I go to Beaufort High School, and in the fall of next year, I'll be attending Spelman College to study political science. My name is Omar Cummings. I go to Beaufort High, and I will be attending University of South Carolina State next year. My name is Dylan Yarbrough, and I go to Bluffton High, and I will be attending Clemson University in the fall of this year. My name is Igeri Jefferson, and I go to Bluffton High School, and I will be attending the University of South Carolina, cheerleading and studying psychology. My name is Evelyn Diaz. I'm from Bluffton High School and I will be attending this fall at the Citadel on an Army Scholarship and I will major in Biology, commission to the United States Army and go pre-med and become a trauma surgeon. I am Tyrone Mitchell. I go to Bluffton High School and I will be attending Winthrop University in fall. My name is Cameron Miller. I attend Well Branch and I'll be attending University of South Carolina Upstate next fall. My name is Jasmine Lovett, and I attend Well Branch Early College High School, and I will be enlisting to the Air Force. My name is Eric Saunders. I attend Well Branch Early College High School, and I will be enlisting in the Army. My name is Myra Garcia. I go to Well Branch, and I will be enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Wow. Such a diverse group as well, and I appreciate all of you that are enlisting in one of our branches of uh, armed services and wish you well in that endeavor. Just a curious question as you, go, as you just went around and introduced yourselves and where you're going, how would you think that practice would work out at graduation? 
So for instance, when your name is called, as you know it's called and you walk across the stage, at the end of announcing your name, your intention is also uh, acknowledged to the crowd so that everyone knows that it doesn't stop, right, when you graduate, that there is a next step. So would that change be a welcome change in our graduation ceremony or is it just not necessary? I feel that like since we're all doing something right after graduation, it's just a milestone, like a step uh, to our path. So it is going to have some change. You know, we're graduating high school, but it's not the big there because we're not there yet. So it's just one of those stepping stones to getting to where we to where we really want to be. The next step. Reflecting back on your high school experience, what do you think was particularly noteworthy, exciting, something that uh, you would want your classmates to, to feel that uh, they have something to look forward to their senior year? Um, what I feel like the uprising seniors could look forward to is like, you know, towards the end or the beginning of the year when we all get together as a 2017 class where we all got to order our cap and gowns and like finally got to be recognized as we're graduating, this is our year. How about May River, first year as a high school? Was it exciting to set that climate, to set the standard essentially for classes to follow? Um, it's very exciting to be the ones to start the traditions and to make way for the undergraduates because we get to decide what they do based on what we do. And it's quite exciting to see what we have in plan for them. Any noteworthy athletic accomplishments this year? I mean, being at Well Branch, we got a lot of, we're mostly known for our sports there. So we made a lot of accomplishments. I know being on a soccer team, we made it for the first round of playoffs first year in Well Branch history for the females. All right. And we're just going on from there. We're just going to keep pushing, especially in our, all our athletics. I mean, at Beaver High, we had a chance to star in a commercial towards football against smoking. Um, football team was able to make it to the second round of the playoffs. Our baseball team, um, we were able to, we're advancing to the fourth round of the playoffs and our basketball team, playoffs, soccer team, playoffs. So this year, we were able to do a lot, I mean, with the fans and everything as a group towards sports and athletics. So. I think you have a, a pitcher over there that's throwing in the 90s, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Mayberry, being that it's our first year in a school, <clears throat> I think we set a very high standard for our athletics for the upcoming years. Um, numerous athletics finished very high in state competition. Our swim team finished third in the state. We had numerous state championships. I broke a state record personally. Um, our basketball team Congratulations. Made, it, made it to the playoffs. Thank you, sir. Um, and then all of our cross country teams and our track teams have won region championships. And I think we set a very high standard given it's our first year. Uh, Beaver High had its first lacrosse team this year. It started off very, a little rough, but I think we're going to see some improvement. It's glad to pilot that team. What, what's the appeal of lacrosse? Um, well, it's, a, it's like a fusion of multiple sports. It's like you got basketball, soccer, all the things are in there. So it's just a new. Yeah, thing. I know across our, across our county. There's this high level of interest now that, that tends to be going toward lacrosse. Yeah, it's one of the fastest growing sports in the United States. It is. Yeah. I know Hilton had also recently received something from, um, the, from your JRTC program too, right? Go ahead. Well, I'm from Battery Creek. <clears throat> I guess our best accomplishments for, is for our volleyball team being our first region chance in 17 years and for our track team finally getting a region chance. Great job. Um, our softball team made it far enough to the district championships and we'll play tomorrow night against St. James High School for Myrtle Beach. And our baseball team just won district championships last night to go to uh, Lower State this weekend. So. All right. 
Well, as you mentioned, our JRTC unit has been doing very well this year. I know last year we were recognized as a distinguished unit with academic honors, which places us in the top 30% in the nation. This year we haven't gotten our official standings yet, but we've had an even better year, especially even with the hurricane, we've had a great year despite that setback. So it's been really good this year and really good in the past. So just continuing growing our unit. Well, playing for Button High as a varsity football player, we, since 2010, we haven't been to the playoffs, but last year, this year, we made it to the third round playoffs. So it's been a pretty set in the high standards for the rising seniors of next year to make it to the playoff next year. Do you think as students and as a student population that we listen to your voice enough, whether it's at the district level, at the school level, are there enough opportunities for you to express concerns you have or things you believe are going well, not going well, uh, and if not, what else can we do to, to incorporate that voice into what we're doing? So, sir, I'd first of all like to thank you for hearing us right now, but I have heard from other students and I myself have sometimes felt that even when the district officials come to the schools, we talk to them, we bring up some issues, and then next time we name may not be invited to that and sometimes we hear instead of them hearing our opinions they just give the reasons why their opinion is right so just some more uh, having a greater voice I think would be greatly appreciated okay. so. how, how do you see that voice being incorporated well as in high schools we get to talk to a lot of other students teachers and even parents and we we talk to each other and we communicate our ideas but just a greater chance to communicate those ideas to the higher ups. To the be. administration? Yes, sir. Okay. In my personal experience, I've been very pleased with how receptive Beaufort County has been to the needs and desires of the students. I think it really starts on a classroom level. I've had amazing experiences with my teachers really pulling the class and trying to take a pulse for the students in the class on how they're going to learn best and how they can receive the content of every class and a process that's going to allow them all to succeed individually. And then on a school-wide level, I know our principal does an amazing job of listening to not only certain kinds of students, but students from all kinds of backgrounds that represent every group within our school. And it goes all the way up to the district for events like these or the student advisory committee where the members and the higher up of the district are actually listening to what's happening on the grounds as students at various high schools across the district. Um, I know as of being a well branch student, we finally got a say so in what we thought was right. Like we got, we finally got issued where we got to get new buildings placed this upcoming year and we're getting things that other schools have that we didn't have at all so i feel like we finally got our voice and hopefully we can keep it like that by talking to you guys more often talking to the district and having you guys ask us or come to us saying if there's any problems or you know how we have the student advisory council keep that going because i feel like that's the way we finally got our voice. I know, again, I'm mentioning our OTC again, but our unit has a lot of things that I know across the country even, a lot of units don't have what we're provided with. We have our own spaces, we have our own equipment. I've been to units that are still stuck in trailers, like we were in trailers 20 years ago, and there are units out there that still are. And I know the district has been a huge help, especially at Hilton Head, just developing our unit and giving us the equipment we need to succeed. So I definitely think listening to our ROTC units and supporting our ROTC units has been a big thing. Student engagement <clears throat> obviously goes a long way, whether it's for the voices, to, to hear your voice, whether it's to ensure um, everyone is doing something in the school environment that allows them to want to attend school, right? Which obviously affects our dropout rate. So what do you think we can do to maybe engage students more at the high school level? Or what are your thoughts on what we could do to reduce that dropout rate? What would keep high school students wanting to attend? Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't think students are as aware um, how dropping out will affect them long term. And I feel that if we inform students better on like the consequences, that it'll lessen the dropout rate. And, and when you say 
the consequences? Are you talking about like future job opportunities? Yeah, job or? opportunities, just like how it goes for a lifetime, you know, how it affects you in the long term. Okay. Um, as far as pre preventing dropouts, I'd say for my school, we have a lot of teachers who care and who show they care and try to engage with us and to try to let us know that dropping out isn't the answer. And I know a lot of seniors now who thought dropping out was the way to go have changed their mind because of the teachers we have. So I think teachers play a big part. So quality teachers will help keep students engaged. I also agree with what's been mentioned that I think the teachers in our schools do a very good job of engaging and forming personal relationships with the students and fostering a relationship of trust and encouraging students to stay into school. But I think one thing we could improve upon is ensuring that there's less of a disconnect between what we're doing in classrooms and what's going to be happening in the real world. A lot of students don't see the applicability or the benefit of learning what's going on in the classroom and how that's going to help them in the future. And I think if we can convey to students how important the skills they're learning in high school really will be for their futures, that can definitely reduce the incentive to drop out. So maybe a little bit more of the application of the theory in our classrooms? Yes. Something that you know you see in Project Lead the Way classes or other classes that will show why you're learning something, right? Instead of just regurgitating it on a test at the end of a, a lesson. A lot of the lack of motivation with students comes from them individually and one of the things teachers could do is incorporate um, interests in the way that they teach. There's some teachers that will just spit information and expect students to regurgitate that knowledge and want to do that. And then we have the teachers that incorporate the enjoyment of teaching and incorporate ways that they can teach to where the students will enjoy what they're doing and want to learn more. So I think that's definitely something that goes in with the, the style of teaching, but then again, every teacher is different, but that's just, yeah. I also agree. Um, teachers at Hilton Head High School, I know for a fact, like, especially like the teachers that also coach, they are like, well, if I see you at the baseball game, maybe I'll throw in an extra quiz and then you can get your extra, it's not really an extra credit, but you take a, another quiz and it'll help you out with your grade a little bit. It's um, on the sports side, it's easier because obviously you have to come to school in order to play your sport or you have to come to school to go to practice. And I think, um, being in a sport helps motivate you to get through school. Me personally, I um, attend TCL, so now I don't go to Hilton Head I Island High School. I go to TCL, and um, it still motivates me to go to TCL because I have to go to practice that later that day. And you just stay motivated to do what you need to do to end up doing what you want to do. For me personally, I had to get through school and go to volleyball practice, and now I'm going to college for volleyball. So school has obviously helped me through the my journey to getting where I want to be as they've been saying like teachers do play a huge role but I feel like parents play a bigger role so like they can learn as much as they want in school but when they go home and they don't have the parent motivation it's like why am I even going to school or if they see that their parents have a great job and are doing well without a school education they will probably think the same thing and that's not the case so I think parents play a huge a huge role and here at Bluffton High our parents are very involved and I think that helps as well. So. That sort of goes in line with talking about the next steps right the future of of why you should stay in school whether it's coming from your parent or a quality teacher. It sounds like a lot of emphasis is placed on our teachers what's occurring in the classroom during that 90 minute block of time right. So when you reflect back on your high school experiences what are some of the things you could capture to help us understand the qualities we want to look for in the next generation of teachers? What is it that made you really want to be on, in that classroom on time, not late, not tardy? What are those qualities that those teachers possess that we need to make sure or ensure that all of our teachers have? Um. The teachers that are the ones who can get the kids involved are the ones that are able to enter the class and the students just turn and they want to learn. It's the teachers that have the personality that kids like being around. A student is more likely to want to learn from someone that they look after, not someone that has a bad attitude or someone who's just going to give out worksheets and not offer the, the willing hand. A student's going to want to learn from someone that they can relate to someone that they can 
um, be around on a personal level, and that's what they feel comfortable doing. The type of teacher I like is the teacher who um, always trying and pushing to make a difference in somebody's life, even though a person may give them attitude and like try to shun them away, and they keep on trying. This shows the person like if they start paying attention more or start changing their ways or whatnot, how much better of a person they can be. Somebody who always like just trying to make an impact and a difference in somebody's life. A teacher like that is more of what we need nowadays. Okay. I believe that the uh, most important thing that a uh, teacher can do for a student is relate to them on a personal level. Because if you don't relate to them on that personal level, you're not going to be able to relate to their, like, their educational level. So if you're able to talk to them as a regular person instead of just another student in a classroom, that really helps like, students understand certain material. And it helps you like, get that connection with the teacher. And that really helps like, you wanting to learn and just, just makes a better school environment in general. Um, I was going to kind of go along the lines that he did about like having a teacher that's relatable to you like inside school and also outside of school because there's so much more like extracurricular activities and other things that teachers are involved in too and if teachers are like more relatable to you on other aspects just outside the classroom it'll make your class it'll make their class more fun and engaging rather than just a class like just learning about with a teacher lecturing the whole time where a teacher like that you can know and get their feel their personality so. No, I think the attitudes and emotions that a teacher represents in a classroom are very important. You know, and attitudes and emotions are just con as contagious as, as sickness may be. You know, if a teacher is very lively and enthusiastic about the subject that they're teaching, it's obviously going to inflect that emotion onto the students, and they're going to feel the same way about learning the subject. They're not going to be slumped down in their desk, not wanting to be in the classroom anymore. I feel like another important thing for a teacher to do is be passionate about what they're teaching and actually care and a lot of times like I know this, some of our most interesting teachers are the ones I've done research on like they have doctorates or something they've done research and also like wanting to enthuse like curiosity and like wanting to know what's next when you come into the classroom really makes the students want to go to class. Is it easy to, to distinguish those that have that passion and those that do not? So one of the, I agree with what people are saying, enthusiasm and the passion for what they do is very important. Also, discipline. Two of the uh, most popular programs in my school are the aviation program and the ROTC program. And both of these are led by former Marines. And so they have a great passion and enthusiasm for what they do. And that shows and it gets the students excited about that. But they can also control class. And uh, so one or two students aren't disrupting learning of everyone else. Yeah. Um, like you said, I think it's very easy to show the difference between someone that has a passion for the subject and someone who does not because you can, I've had some teachers that just let you go on the computer and do the work that they assign, but I had other teachers that will go out of their way and make sure you're passing their class and will make sure you understand everything that they're trying to teach you. Well, I know I, as a student at Hilton Head High, we have the IB program at our school, which has amazing teachers who are dedicated to their work and some of the best probably in the nation. So I know that's been a big help to our school, just having those teachers that have been trained and are just exceptional at what they do and just have that passion to teach students who are willing to learn. I agree what they were saying earlier that it has to do with a lot of the motivation and the passion and the discipline of the teachers because uh, as a teacher it's not just to teach and let them go on their own it's more like teach them and they know that they're molding the minds of the young the young minds so it's like they have to just go out there and do what they do and build, <laughs> build the future minds. Um, also, um, I'm in ROTC, and with my colonel, he also relates to us on a personal level and a teacher level. Um, I guess a good quality would be a teacher that has lots of learning styles, not just that one, because they have to put in mind that all of us are different and that we all learn in different ways. So if they put that into their curriculum and the way they teach, then I feel that's what a successful and great teacher would have that quality. Okay. Um, I feel that 
the classroom really feeds off the energy that the teacher has. So if you can feel the energy of like wanting to be positive, wanting to give you that information, that the class will be more receptive in that way. So if a teacher wants you to um, be excited, then the class will be excited, more excited to learn. So uh, all great qualities, passion, knowledge, relationships. Um, so that encompasses what we should be looking for as a t for in a teacher each and every year. How important are extracurricular activities at a high school? How important is it to have the clubs, ROTC, the athletics? And are we offering the right type and variety to give every student an opportunity to be in a leadership role? I feel as a student of Bluffton High School, we do have many diverse um, clubs and sports. So I feel that it motivates uh, young people to go and join them. And being in a sport in a certain club, you have to have certain grades or certain things that you have to do, which also leads to act, uh, for you to be more involved in school academically. And um, I just feel it brings the students more together to the school and they contribute more to the community as well. I feel like the role that these clubs play are more to unite the students and um, I feel like there needs to be more opportunities for people to actually like make groups like based off their interests not just like to help them get into college or have like a like something to put on their college application. Okay so maybe do some kind of interest inventory to find out the interest of students and then design the activities around those interests is that what you're talking about? I truly believe that the importance of clubs and extracurricular activities cannot be overstated. I know for a fact at Hilton Head Island High School we have a surfeit of opportunities for students to engage in activities that they're passionate about that aren't strictly academic in nature. And if they can't find something that excites them, it's a very easy process to go find a teacher who's willing to mentor them, inform their own club, and allow them to get the leadership of experience of starting a new organization and leading that through its first few years of existence. Um, also at Hilton Head Island High School, we have things like out of the blue, like we have a couple of IB students that created the coloring club and literally these days you don't have anything you do, you go and you color and that's just another <laughs> fun thing you can do. Or we have Coloring is becoming a pretty big uh, activity for adults as well. Yes, like there's actually things you have to do. Coloring is not easy, like there's like, it's more of a stress reliever, like after you finish all your work and you're like, oh my gosh, I have nothing to do, I can go color or I can go to the Spanish club and learn how to solve said a day like something it's not only like the uh, curricular ac activities that you need to do it's the ones that you want to do and you get motivated to do the things you want to do by doing what you need to do and like you have to have of course certain grades to get into these clubs they don't just let you come in just because you want to I definitely think our extracurriculars are a big motivating factor I know two cadets off the top of my head and in my unit two years ago were ready to drop out of high school and today they're getting ready to take my place as members of command staff next year. So it's been just ROTC and all those extracurriculars we have at Hilton Head have been a huge motivating factor for keeping our students engaged and keeping our students even just in high school. So I think they're very, I think they're essential honestly to a good high school. Mm -hmm. Kind of going off what she said, I think they're very part of our lives. Um, I know for me, when I, when I was in middle school, going into high school, I was very scared, I was very shy, and being on the soccer team, I've been on the soccer team for four years now, and um, it just helped me develop my, commu my communication skills, my leadership skills, just all around make friends, and those, things, those are things that you need in life, so I think it's a great addition. I also feel that having extracurricular activities and sports after school or during school keeps the students engaged so it keeps them busy and I feel that it helps keep them out of trouble so while they're doing a sport uh, instead of doing that they could be doing something bad so it keeps them focused and engaged and doing something other than something that they shouldn't be doing. I agree that the clubs do like it keeps it's like an outlet for some kids but at the same time we don't get enough time to like meet enough like at Well Branch I know we have to do like advisory, you know, during homeroom and all that. But we don't have enough time to actually enjoy ourselves in our club to see like even if that's really what we want to do. Okay. So not, uh, enough time to actively perform the mission of the club. Yeah. 
Not only do clubs help uh, incorporate academics into the students' everyday lives, but it also introduces camaraderie and allows the students to be able to be together, and it also improves the overall uh, atmosphere of the school. You have students that walk down the hallways that are parts of the football team, and you see the special needs class all give them high fives, and it allows them to interact. It allows the cheerleaders to walk around, and everyone knows who they are, and it in increases the overall level of the atmosphere in the school and just uh, provides for uh, a happier day. Um, I feel not only sports, but <clears throat> excuse me, extracurricular activities in general are you know essential to student success. Um, it gives that student that drive and that motivation to want to make the grade and just want to be able to you know do something. Um, as he said, you know it brings the school close together instead of you know going to class, going home, and then what do you do? It gives everybody that 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 brotherhood and that sisterhood and that just camaraderie just to want to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, I definitely encourage anyone that's just starting high school to get into as many clubs and sports as you can because it keeps you involved in the school. It keeps you out of trouble because especially with the drug testing that we had even before then, if you're on a sports team and your coach caught you like doing anything bad, they, you still have the risk of getting kicked off the team. And you have to keep your grades up. Even some clubs keep you in the community with community service hours that you have to do. So it's definitely a good decision just to get in there. You can make new friends and it'll motivate you to stay in school. Uh, on that line, you know, with all that, we, and we do offer a lot, I would agree. I, I agree with each and every one of you, and all are important, and maybe we need to seriously look at some kind of interest component from a balanced perspective. All of you have extremely busy lives. I know you do because you're involved in athletics, extracurricular, academics. Are we providing the right balance in terms of time for you to accomplish all the things you're involved in? And if not, do you have any suggestions on what we could do to have a better balance? I feel like um, this year we didn't have as much time with the new time change. And it's like, as soon as we get out of practice, it's go home, do work, go to sleep, wake back up, same thing the next day. And like, we didn't have that much time to really work or anything this year. I feel that last year, for example, I would go to school right after school. I'd do a sport right after sport. I'd go to work and then homework and then everything all over. So my life was pretty busy. So even last year with the time, I thought that was good. I had enough time to do everything. I balanced out um, my time schedule. But then this year, it was a lot more difficult because I was also involved in extracurricular activities and sports. So when I would get out of my sport, I wouldn't be able to work. Um, so a lot of us, um, some of us have to work for like our family and help out and everything. So it's, I think the whole time change really had an effect on some of us. I feel that like it would more help out the people that don't do anything after school. Um, but for those of us that are really engaged in school, after school activities, stuff in our community or have a job, it really affects us, so I think that going back to the time schedule that we had before would be pretty great <laughs> and easier and um, easier to balance out our time. Um, I agree with her based on the um, later start time because for softball, sometimes we have to leave early to play to go play at far away um, games. And last year we would be getting out of school at 2.30 regularly, and this year we're getting out, like we have to get out at three to leave to go to our game. So we're missing a lot of fourth period, which like for some is like an AP class. So it push, kind of pushes us back on that level. Um, but I do think the implement of ILT, the independent learning time, is a good idea for students. And it allows us to um, go to the, see the teachers that we need help with or like classes. But um, right now we have a structured ILT, which is kind of, like hard for some students because we have AP classes and like exams this week, you know, and we need to go see those teachers, but instead we're forced to go to a certain ILT or a certain classroom based on like what period of the day. So I think if we like opened up the ILT that, and then we could go to any one of our teachers and then go study for the AP exams or review and stuff like that, it'll be more helpful. How do you feel about ILT? I know all, all of you have a form of it in some way or another 
and whether it should be structured, unstructured, is it helpful, not helpful? I, I do agree that it's helpful. Um, in relating to all the things that were just said, it allows for that time in school where we can get our homework done to where some students have to go to work after school. Like me personally, I work a 40 to 45 hour work week in addition to school. And then addition with the time change, we get out an hour later. So I'm late to work every day. I stay longer, then I get off work and have homework, and then I do it all over again. If the time change was implemented to allow more sleep, all it does is allow us to get out later, which makes us go to bed later, and then we wake up later, but we get the same amount of sleep. If we had school starting at an earlier time, getting out at an earlier time, it would allow more time at the end of the day to get all of those things in we need, and the sleep schedules wouldn't change. But I do agree that ILT is a good idea. It allows for the time for students to get down and do some work that maybe they don't have time for after school because they have a sport or have something, but yes. Just kind of going off what he said, I think it's a great implement. Um, I can't remember the last time I had to go home and actually do homework because I do it during IOT. I do all my work there. I do my tutoring there if I need it. So I just think it's a great addition. I, I absolutely love it. That's all I have to say. Um, I see the IOT both ways. Like, it's really helpful for us that actually do have to do work, and um, so we get our homework done, but then there's those other students that just fool around and don't do anything. So the structured ILT, I guess, well, we go to a certain class, or not a specific class, we pick what class we want to go to, and we stay there for ILT. Um, I think it's helpful, but at the same time, um, before when we didn't have that structured ILT, we just had ILT, I was able to go to more than one classroom, and had en enough time to turn in or work on some of the work and ask around. Because if you're like found in the hallway, there's like a sweeping detail, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, you get put into a classroom and it's, it's not fun. It happened to me once, I didn't even know. I was like, whoa. <laughs> but um, then for the people that fool around, some of them just walk around and don't do anything. So they ruin it for the rest of us. I know, at least in terms of Hilton Head, our ILT is, I don't want to say unstructured, but a little bit less structured than what the other schools are describing. We're pretty much allowed to go anywhere we want as long as we're doing something. And I think that's been really helpful, especially for our juniors and seniors who are involved in a ton of extracurriculars and have all these high level classes that they need to get done. Just having those extra 50 minutes every day to sit down and say, okay, I've got three pieces of homework I need to get done and I've got time for two of them after school so I'm going to get one done now and it's been essential especially for me being a two sport athlete in ROTC and all the things that I've been involved in having that extra time to get my work done and even just if I don't have work to get done just sitting and relaxing for a couple of minutes and just <laughs> getting getting the stress out yeah that's been essential to my personal just education in general just having that time to de-stress. I know also um, some coaches that are teachers, they enforce that you come to their classroom and you watch film. If you watch film for 30 minutes and it's Monday film day, that's 30 minutes off of your practice and now you only go to practice for an hour and a half. Now you can go do your homework or during IOT, you can all, you still also have 20, what, 25 minutes to go to that uh, interact meeting that you have to go to. You literally just sign in and leave if you know what you need to do. And I think coaches really take that into consideration that uh, some of your players need to be home earlier than what they like getting home at 6.15, 6.30 is a struggle for getting your homework done. Or some coaches I know personally, uh, Garrett Talarchek makes you come to his class once a week and do 30 minutes of homework and then 20 minutes of watching film. And then he's gonna let you out of practice 30 minutes early. So some teachers slash coaches take that into consideration. And I think we can all agree that time is the scarcest of all resources. And I think ILT does a really good job of mitigating some of the stress that comes along with being a student who's involved in extracurriculars, athletics, is academically passionate. But one of the benefits of ILT that I think goes underappreciated is the social aspect of it. I love to go around talking to my friends, socializing. And when I do that in class, sometimes it can get a little bit disruptive. Right. So ILT does give me those 50 minutes to kind of go around, make my round, say I hi to everyone. I would never have guessed you're that social butterfly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it allows me to be a little less disruptive in class. Mm -hmm. oh. 
For my school specifically, we used to do a structured IELT, but during the second semester we changed it and I like how organized it is now because we go to our home room and we check in and make sure everyone's accounted for and then we get a pass and go to whichever class we need help. So we can go to guidance or anywhere, the library. We just have to make sure we have a pass and we're accounted for. So I, I love our IELT because it gives me time to do my homework or go check on my everything I need for my senior year to make sure everything's done. On that note, senior year. I know you're busy searching for scholarships, searching for the next opportunity. Are we doing enough to assist you in that search? And, and if not, what else do you believe we can do to help you secure the resources or the next uh, level of education that, that you're wanting to pursue or career? Well, I know personally here at Bluffton High, I am in guidance every day. I'm probably the most like stressed out person at the school I don't know I'm like I worry a lot so I'm there all the time and like the guidance they do more than enough and they put everything that they're doing aside just to help anyone that comes in like I'll start signing in and they'll be like oh no 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 come on come on you don't have to sign in like they don't waste any time they find us like they go to our classes to bring us scholarships and make sure that we do them before the deadline so that's why I have so many done and along with my fellow seniors and everything like it's getting done. So I thank Bluffton High for all of that and all of our opportunities. I think uh, we definitely have the opportunity to do a lot, especially through the program Naviance. Um, you literally sign on there and then there's like four pages of just scholarships that you can sign up for. And I've signed up for uh, six, I believe. So I think Naviance, if you all log on there, it's very helpful. It's easy it's your school login you just go on there do what you do you get your transcript on there you can send it to wherever you get your test scores through there you get uh, your scholarships and you can go look on colleges and see what they require for you to get I know that's how I picked out my college and um, it also it's basically like a guidance mother like it just does everything you need to do for your senior year like it's basically a checklist of everything you need to get done before you can leave this high school so it sounds like it's a one-stop shop yes um, I know at May River High School, every single teacher has the college they attended above their door. And if you see a college you want to go to, you can literally go to any teacher and ask, hey, can you help me fill out these applications? How was your experience? And all this other stuff. And it's very helpful because I know some seniors are, seniors are very indecisive and it just gives them a clearer picture of what they want to do. I, I never thought about uh, the part of it being a recruitment tool. I think at Well Branch, like, because we're all, all the seniors, we kind of got senior artists right now. So we're kind of really thankful for the counselors that we have because they're staying on top of us for the things that we're not doing for ourselves. So, Like Ajiri said earlier, our school, our guidance counselors are very involved in like our lives. Uh, they make sure that we have everything we need. For example, my guidance counselor, Ms. Holman, uh, I'm in there all the time. She stops everything she's doing just to help me out. And there, there could be like six people in the room and we're all getting everything done. She does more than she, I guess, is supposed to. And I'm very thankful for that because of her and some other teachers. I, we have all the resources we have. It's just students have to go and play their part too. She finds me in the cafeteria. She's like, hey, here's a new scholarship. Go and apply. So right now I have 100,500 and counting wow. worth of scholarships as of right now. Congratulations. Thank you. And I know at Well Branch, our counselors are very active with us, but we also have the year up program, which is like for colleges. So he also helps us looking for colleges, looking for, you know, those things that we need along with the counselors. He helps them, he helps us as the class of 2017. I really can't say enough about how much my guidance counselor has done for me over the past year. I remember it was when I was applying for college early action, it was right when the hurricane came and hit. Mm. And I didn't have any of my teacher recommendations in. I was a complete mess. I had no idea what was going on. I was sure I was going to miss the deadline. And I was able to contact my guidance counselor while she was evacuating, making sure her family was safe. And she actually went, found every single one of my teachers, personally contacted my admissions officer at the college to which I was applying and ensured that all of my recommendations got there on time and everything went fluidly. So she really was a complete... A true savior. dedication. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. She went above and beyond. 
Um, starting this year off, I was a little afraid because we had a new, all new guidance and gear up staff. Like we didn't, we weren't familiar with anybody that was there since our freshman year. They all left, but I was actually really relieved when I met all of them, especially our senior um, guidance counselor and our gear up coach, which we in Well Branch are the only high schools I think in Beaufort County right. that has it. But that's the biggest help gear up and our counselors. They have uh, scholarship newsletters and they let us know, they help us with recommendations and anything we need, we just go to them. Their office is open 24 seven, so we can just go and we'll have everything we need for our senior year. Let me ask you to reflect back now from elementary, middle, and high school. One of our challenges is, uh, you probably read about it in the paper, is to ensure all students are performing at the same level. For instance, that all third graders are reading on grade level by third grade. So as you reflect back on your 13 years, what do you believe we could do differently to eliminate that achievement gap that we experience within Beaufort County? And it's not unique to Beaufort County. It's across the nation. But within our borders, within Beaufort County, what experiences, what extra help, tutorial activities, what do you think would benefit the elementary students to put them in a position to where they are ready to take AP classes, dual credit courses at our colleges and universities and other coursework. What sets us, what could we do to set us aside from the norm of still having that gap? I, I do think we have good uh, tactics to, uh, to battle the the students with the lower academics that maybe aren't up to par on their grades. We have the tutoring, we have the, the certain classes that teach a little differently that maybe will help them learn that way, but we also have the classes for the extra intelligent students. Like I know in seventh grade, I took a ninth grade math class and it allowed me to accelerate even faster in math. and. In that, I was able to help other students. We have programs that we have some students in higher classes that can tutor other students in lower classes, and it that incorporates the the camaraderie as well. But uh, I think it's beautiful that uh, that you can take classes from different levels, whether it be above or if maybe you're a little slower, you can take classes from below to help you catch up. That's a really good concept. How effective is peer tutoring? You know, you, you mentioned having someone uh, that's at a, uh, maybe functioning at a higher level in a class help someone that's not. So is peer tutoring a, a better strategy maybe for us? Um, the concept of IOT, how would IOT work at the elementary grades? If we tried to do something sort of along that line, because IOT is also there to try to ensure that you stay at a certain level, right? I think peer tutoring is really great. I think students listen to their peers more than anybody else, for better or for worse. You know, more, more than teachers, more than parents, more than guidance counselors. And I think when their peers are encouraging them to do their best and encouraging them to achieve more, then that's what they really listen to, and it really helps them uh, give them that drive. I know at our school with our national honor societies, like French National Honor Society, science, all that stuff, one of the elements of our National Honor Society is mandatory community service hours and at least usually around half of the service hours have to be in that subject so like science it has to be related to science, French related to French, so on and I think the most popular way to get those hours is through tutoring and I know it's been essential to a lot of our IB kids just tutoring other French students really helps us develop our own French skills and that was essential to me like I took my IB French class in my fall semester and was testing at the end of the spring semester and just being able to go in and tutor other students throughout the spring semester was keeping me involved in French and that's honestly I think that's the reason I passed that test mm -hmm. so I think it's been not only good for the students who are being tutored but for good for the students who are tutoring themselves um, I, I'm pretty sure every other school has it but teacher to cadet going it over and helping the younger kids like they look up to us as just being in high school not even being a senior looking up looking up to the older kids like oh my gosh he plays football he's trying to teach me how to read like I want to read this because I want to impress him or also we have uh, interact and with interact club you have early act and if our kids 
do what they need to do in school, then we have a party at the end of the month or something like that. So it's also the little kids looking up to us so that puts a lot on our shoulders, but we just have to do our best so that we could uh, motivate the generations coming in to make our school look as good as, as what we had it. And so it's not falling apart. So we could just keep it up to the greater standards. Um, back on the basis of peer tutoring, not even necessarily having scheduled tutoring times, but I think that in the classroom during normal study that students can, a student can teach another student the content a little better than the teacher can because they're doing it. They mm. know the way that they learned it and sometimes, not that the teacher is wrong, but they might teach the content a certain way and a student might be able to explain it to another student the perfect way for them to understand. I know that's happened a couple of times in my classes where I don't know something and a student says it a certain way that is extremely helpful that a teacher might not be able to say just because of the age gap or whatever it may be but just the students being able to interact in class as well helps them learn even better than just yeah, directly from the teacher. I think that's the very important part is, is being able to speak the language, right? Yeah, we have um, Mu Alpha Theta, which is our math honor society, and um, we have to tutor the like freshman and sophomore kids that are taking algebra one or geometry. In those classes, like going back and helping them tutor them, it helps us prepare for the SAT for math classes that we haven't taken in a long time. So um, that is a really good tool for us as well as for them. You know, I think that's an important feature is as you're preparing for ACT or SAT, it's some of that math that you've not taken in a while, right? So tutor doing that kind of tutorial work helps refresh it in your mind as well. Um, back to what you said about uh, elementary schools having ILT, I think that it would be a good thing because uh, so there wouldn't be that much of that um, gap. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, uh, you're struggling in a certain class, have them go to that class, not just like any class, and I guess they still have their recess and everything, because that's also important, because they need to get out there. Um, but I think it's, um, I think it'd be like a good deal. So they go in, they get tutored, so then they catch up, and or the students that are more advanced, they get to do whatever yeah, they like want to. Yeah, sort of like focused intervention or focused acceleration. Right, right. So. Yeah, I think that it'd be a good thing to have that in elementary schools. It'd help out a lot with the kids that are a little behind and keep them up. As we're getting ready to close this out and you think about your next step, what have we done well to prepare you for that? And what advice would you give those that are getting ready to follow you in, in the future years? Focusing on the next step, not just into college but into our lives. I know a lot of people say this generally about taking classes that'll prepare us for things that we do in everyday life like our taxes or our finances. Mm -hmm. um, the class taxes personal death, finance. Right? What's that? Taxes and death are the yeah, two yeah. certain but, things. But really that, that some of those things like personal finance, I know that is a class that we offer and it helps uh, an extreme amount with learning about how to tackle debt or do mm -hmm. um, planning a budget, things like that, uh, the parenthood classes, all of those almost prepare you to be able to live life better than maybe a math class. Now the math class will give you the knowledge and it'll give you the, the, uh, the knowledge per se to know how to do those things, but a math class isn't gonna teach you how to raise a child. It's not gonna teach you how to buy a car and how to make right decisions in life, but yeah. Um, one thing that we could, should stress to um, all students, like um, upcoming freshmen and like freshmen and sophomores now, is that every grade matters. Like I feel like a lot of freshmen come in and they're not like, they still have the middle school mindset, like they're not really fully prepared for high school yet and they like kind of goof around and their first semester or like their whole freshman year is like kind of a waste now because they're just like still in the eighth grade mindset. And, um, but really all those grades are going to follow you and they're going to help you. Like right now, I know some people that are struggling to get into colleges because of their freshman or sophomore years. So I feel like we should emphasize that like every year counts and um, every grade and all your GPA, that all is going to follow you up until right now. So. And I think that's so important that every grade does matter. That if you miss out on one, it can hurt you when you think yes, you're ready to go. I know personally I haven't taken any finance classes or parenting classes, but I've taken teacher cadet and I've worked with the special needs kids and I feel like 
in the future that's going to make me a better person and it's going to like make me realize that people aren't as fortunate as others and I'm just going to put them before myself and I think I'm going to be like a, just a better person in the long run and keep an open mind and just a full heart. Yeah. Also, I know um, that they shouldn't get comfortable. I got plenty of freshman girls that play on the basketball team with me and they go, well, uh, freshman year was so easy, like I'm barely trying and I have a 98 <laughs> in every class. I was like, okay, I understand that, but it's your freshman year. It's not supposed to come and attack you. It's, you work up. I know sophomore year gets a little harder. Junior year, junior year, you're stressing out. And then senior year, you're more of like, okay, now I got everything done and now I just have to be here to get the last little things I need. But I don't want them to get comfortable because that was me, soft, or freshman year. I mm, Tests were easy. I never studied. Like, just everything was so much easier. And it was not as much content. The context and stuff comes later. And just getting comfortable also can impact you in life. Getting comfortable with the wrong things, like, that can let people start pushing you over. You just start saying yes all the time, you know, stuff like that. So I think people should know, like, don't get comfortable. Like, there's harder times. I think it's very easy when we reflect over the last four years to kind of get lost in all the academic challenges we've undertaken. But I'm truly a believer that high school is a lot less about what we learned rather than learning how to be a critical thinker and a member of a community and a member of society. Being at Hilton Head Island High School has taught me to be a leader amongst my peers. It has taught me how to manage my time appropriately, how to delegate tasks, and how to truly integrate into a community and a society. And I think that's really the most important thing I've taken from high school. It's not gonna be differential equations or the American Revolution, it's really going to be the life skills that I've learned from being a member of the Hilton Head Island High School community. Um, I know at Well Branch, like they said, every grade counts. We have a freshman academy where the freshmen can prepare themselves for you know their senior year and can have everything placed for them and they know the road they need to go down. And personally for the kids at Well Branch going into military branches, you know, teachers can't really help us with that because, you know, they don't know anything about boot camp or that branch. But our counselors do a great job of having our our recruiters come in with us. They at least come with, come to us like every two weeks or like every week. And I know I personally check in with my recruiter every Monday and I PT every Wednesday with him and the rest of the kids that are depth in or went down to MEPS. So I think the counselors have a big part on what we do and how we do everything. Well, it's been an honor and a privilege to spend this time with each and every one of you. Um, I, this is my fourth year here, so I feel like I'm sort of graduating as well with you this year. Uh, I've had the honor of watching you become the leaders you are over the course of your time in high school. And uh, as I said at the outset, I, I'm completely confident in where we're going, not only in this community, this state, and this nation, because of your ability and your leadership skills, we're in very, very good hands. Um, I hope our community enjoyed hearing you as much as I enjoy each and every time I get to spend some time with you. And thank you for supporting our schools. Thank you for supporting each and every one of these students and the other 22,000 that attend our schools each and every day and have a great graduation. Mm -hmm.